If there was one thing that cast a shade on the Star Wars Episode 9 title and trailer reveal at Star Wars Celebration, it was that on the eve of the event, Disney CEO Bob Iger himself revealed that Episode 9 would be followed not by any other cool movies, but by a big screen hiatus, during which new Star Wars incarnations, like The Mandalorian, would be used exclusively to push the streaming service Disney+. Plus. He did, however, mention that more Star Wars movies were being developed, although they had not yet been announced. Kathleen Kennedy has since shed more light on what those movies might be. In this editorial, I will go over which Star Wars movies are in development for the big screen, what is really going on behind the scenes, and which mistakes Kathleen Kennedy admits to making with The Last Jedi and with Solo. In an interview published April 12th in The Hollywood Reporter, which has been making the rounds the last few days, Kathleen Kennedy talks about planning the next decade's worth of Star Wars movies on the big screen. She spoke of two different projects, one being Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy announced last year, the other being a separate Star Wars trilogy by Game of Thrones showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. She further implied that there are only discussions and no final decisions at this moment, but that plans will be locked down at the summit next month. In another interview with MTV News, published April 16th, she further reiterated, in not so many words, that she has no idea what the future will hold at the moment, but when pressed, she confirmed that characters introduced in the current trilogy might return in the future, and that a Knights of the Old Republic project was in development. She did not clarify if this Old Republic project was identical with either the Benioff and Weiss trilogy or with Ryan Johnson's trilogy, or if that is a separate thing altogether. These two interviews, however, become interesting when put into context of last September's interview with Bob Iger, published by The Hollywood Reporter. In it, he said they were going to pump the brakes following the release of Episode 9, which we since have gotten official confirmation they are indeed doing, although slamming the brakes would appear to be a more apt description. This interview was also the first time, to my awareness, a new movie series by Game of Thrones showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss was highlighted, although I hear interestingly didn't mention Ryan Johnson's trilogy with as much as a passing reference. In fact, Kathleen Kennedy is the only one who has been touting that. Finally, Bob Iger made it abundantly clear that about which movies get released and when, the buck stops with him, effectively confirming that Kennedy's power and influence have been significantly reduced. This interview with Iger is probably what prompted Kathleen Kennedy's camp to the very next week to leak that her contract had been renewed for three years, something that Disney did not announce. The fact that they didn't even issue a press release confirming any kind of continued faith in their executive under fire lends credibility to the rumors that Bob Iger is most displeased with her and wants to get rid of her if and when the opportunity to do so arises, as we've covered before. So what does that mean for the upcoming projects? Kathleen Kennedy states that decisions will be made at the summit next month, and there is no reason to disbelieve that. That is when they will be going over the various pictures available to them, meaning Ryan Johnson's trilogy, Benioff and Weiss's trilogy, that other Disney Plus series no one seems to care about, plus any other movie they may be developing that so far has not been mentioned to the public. Kathleen Kennedy will probably give her recommendations, but as Bob Iger made clear, the final decision is his. That is potentially bad news for Ryan Johnson's trilogy. I've previously mentioned that what I have heard through the grapevine is that his trilogy is still being developed, but the pitch will have to blow Iger away if he is to proceed with it, and maybe his pitch will do just that, but that the good working relationship with Kathleen Kennedy played a bigger part in her announcing his trilogy in the first place, more so than the actual pitch combined with that The Last Jedi Fallout is what necessitated a big screen slowdown in the first place, and that Iger didn't even mention him in the interview where he highlighted Benioff and Weiss, indicates that the deck is hardly stacked in favor of Ryan Johnson's trilogy, because make no mistake about it, The Last Jedi was a major contributing factor to solo bombing. But will they admit that?
Studio executives rarely admit to making mistakes. If there is any way blame can be shifted elsewhere, ideally towards the audience, it will. Case in point, how many times have Star Wars fans been called haters, trolls, misogynists, racists, Trump supporters, and everything else that fans of both Star Trek and Ghostbusters had to endure before, be that as it may. Following the episode 9 panel, Kathleen Kennedy reportedly did admit one mistake. She told both MTV News and the Empire podcast that they learned a very important message from Solo, namely that doing two films in less than a year wasn't something the fans were prepared to accept, and they made a mistake with that. So that's it. That remains the official party line. There was nothing wrong with either The Last Jedi or with Solo. They didn't do any mistakes with the movies themselves, oh no. Their only mistake, the one both Iger and Kennedy will admit to, was releasing Solo too soon after The Last Jedi. And that's really the audience's fault, isn't it? I mean, how could Kennedy possibly know that the same audience that will flock to see Marvel movies two or three months apart would be overwhelmed and fatigued by Star Wars movies five months apart. That, at least, is their excuse, which sounds so much better than that allowing Ryan Johnson to throw the plan out and go his own way, a way many audiences had huge issues with, created Star Wars despondency, which will be much harder to overcome than any fatigue. I have heard a rumor suggesting that Kennedy might have made yet another mistake. Not only did she allow Ryan Johnson to throw Abram's trilogy plans out the window, she is rumored to have compromised that very plan from the get-go. Allegedly, Abrams wanted the legacy characters to carry the first part of the new trilogy, and then let the new characters take over the torch towards the end, after they had been firmly established. While Kennedy insisted legacy characters be pushed to the background and killed on the rate of one per movie, while the new characters stole the show at all times. Well, Episode 9 involves a return to a reworked version of the original plan, and to legacy characters, including the Emperor and Lando Calrissian, as the main selling points. Speaking of Lando, that activist droid from Solo, the one the young Lando had a very special kind of relationship with, that droid was portrayed by actress and playwright Phoebe Waller-Bridge, whose current assignment is updating Agent 007, James Bond, for more progressively inclined audiences. Check out our separate video for more on that. But back to Star Wars. Let me know which trilogy you want to see, how excited you are for the Old Republic, and your opinion on all of this in the comments. If you like this video, then please help share it and share your opinion in the comments. Midnight's Edge aims to give the most comprehensive analysis and commentary on genre culture and entertainment. If you would like to see more of our videos, then please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and remember to indicate that you would like to be notified when new videos are uploaded. If you really like what we do, then please support us on Patreon until a better alternative comes along, or send us a direct donation through PayPal. Also check out our sister channel Midnight's Edge After Dark for live shows and other rants. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay tuned for more here at Midnight's Edge.